Hey guys, how's it going? So tonight what I'm going to be doing is going over the use of something called DeepFace Live software as opposed to DeepFace Lab. DeepFace Lab is the software that I use when I make any of the deepfakes that I've uploaded to my channel wherein you basically pre-render everything and then you use your trained AI deep, you know, deepfake model and apply it to a section of video or like I, I take a bunch of clips usually and put them together and then use that but whatever uh, and you apply that to your destination footage and you come out with uh, like I say your, your ultimate deep fake uh, but what I'm gonna be doing today like I say is deep face live software which allows you to deep fake in real time it's just of course not as good a quality because invariably it's trying to do it all at one time instead of pre-rendering everything so the resolution is much lower you can't use um, like the resolution the maximum of that I as far as I can tell that you can use for a model is like 224 and the resolution of the models I've been doing for my channel have been 512 and 640 usually so the quality won't be the same but the ability to do it in real time you can do it for live streaming and so forth which is pretty cool so stick around here and we'll get started here in a second I'll show you guys how it works and I'll be using it going forward sometimes when I live stream for gaming and so forth the question will be can my PC handle deep faking me and running the game at the same time? That I kind of question, so stand by. If you haven't already done so, please click the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Thanks. All right, I had to restart because for some reason OBS uh, decided that it couldn't fit this window in it properly without me rescaling my desktop a few times. So this is the DeepFace Live software and it gives you some different options. You can tell it to deep fake like any of these any MPEG4 that has faces in it. You can apply one of these pre-selected models or your own model too. And it actually does a halfway decent job. So maybe we'll try that here in a minute. But I can also show you how sorry my this this Sony Andy camera, in retrospect, probably isn't that good an idea for this because if it sits idle too long, there might be a power setting to change, but it likes to just shut itself off. And then you gotta fiddle with it to get it in, turn back on. Sorry, one sec. Whatever, I'll use my Logitech for now. This is, the, the, the handy cam is being a little bit less optimal for this than I thought. It does work, but anyways. So uh, your selections need to be these are from like the walkthrough. I've tried the other ones. The, the best I've, luck I've had seems to be Yellow V5. And it gives you the option to select your GPU or your CPU. You always want to go through GPU. I was kind of curious to see if having a couple different GPUs in your system and having some of them handle some of these settings and some the other the other GPU handle the other half, like see if there was any benefit to doing that. But I'd like to you know to drop the load a little bit, load balance. But I, I don't know if it really makes a difference. But uh, we want Google Face Mesh to open CV LBF one. Let's use your CPU, and so we'll again pick our Radeon Pro. Face merger needs to be done. This is not able to read my uh, my GPU properly for some reason, but it still works. So just I don't want the CPU on the GPU. Device index. So this is where it picks like which camera. So in this case, I'm not sure which one it is. Just play with it until you find. And so does direct show. So that's that's my average media that's hooked up to that Sony Handycam. Let me try to get that to turn on here real quick. Stupid burn. All right. Come on. There you go. So now you can see this is not at the best angle of me. There you go. Uh, you can see that it has applied the Google Face Mesh already. That's all these little green dots that kind of move around with you as you move. It does a pretty good job. Of keeping up with me. I want to pick Tom Cruise right now because the other ones I don't like if you select these other ones that don't have they don't have it it'll download them but it takes a minute and I've already got Tom Cruise downloaded and I would like to select my GPU again for this and give me a second and you can see Tommy boy is kind of working um, the delay target delay I changed to 50 <clears throat> and you can see it's moving pretty well in real time Tom Cruise is moving in real time. Now you got different resolution settings. My phone is vibrating for some reason. I had an email, sorry. Uh, anyways, the, uh, 
the same resolution over here. If you pick much higher than this, like right now the frame rate's about 50, so that's really actually still going, picking up, still going. It's really pretty good actually. There you go, pretty smooth. Huh? Well, it kind of flails around, but if you go much above that, like you go up to 720 by 40. And we're kind of around the 30s, but it dropped below that at 1.2. So, I mean, that's acceptable. But as soon as you go to like 720p, you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> now, I would like to take like my my Kingpin 3090 and throw it in the system again and try it and pair it with a Threadripper for this because I think together they'd probably do a pretty good job. I think, I mean, it's hard to be sure, but this is the DirectX 12 version of DeepFace Live. There is this natural NVIDIA version of it that you may, that you may rather that uh, uses CUDA cores and so forth, the CUDA library. Just like the DeepFace Lab software, there's, uh, like I can say, there's two different versions of those. Again, one for NVIDIA, one for everything else. So uh, it might work better with the thread if we're combined with an NVIDIA GPU. But I'll drop it back down to this. And then what you can do is you can tell it you want to output a window like for example, I want to do the merged frame and then I hit the window button, it'll make a separate window for that. Give me a second and I'll be right back and I will add that to my OBS stream. One second. So you should be able to see like just a standard window now like floating around with me as Tom Cruise. And I've just said I don't look anything like Tom Cruise in real life, so this doesn't really work that well with a kind of a middle aged overweight bald guy, but you get the and if I shaved, I think it would work better too. Obviously, I've got, you know, the neck beard going on, which Tom Cruise would likely never take part in. So give me one second here, and what we'll do is we'll actually I should go do this on the fly. So that was device index one. Let's try two. Sometimes it's not real cooperative with picking up the camera. That's strange. You see it's just like a black window for some reason. But give me one second and I'll fiddle with it until I get uh, my Brio to pick up. Alright, so I finally get the Brio to pick up. I don't know why, but I actually had to disconnect the, uh, the other camera. It's like it didn't want to work with both of them, I think, at the same time, I can't get in a black window here. So, well, this is the Logitech Brio it's sitting on top of the monitor, so I have a pretty good view of myself. So, for example, if I get my Arnold Schwarzenegger model to work, I will have, uh, I'll load that up here in the next day or two, whenever I think it's ready to try it. And if that works, then I can, you know, theoretically sit there during the live stream and make noises like, how are you, you know, Tom Cruise doesn't talk this way, but Arnold does. And so that'd be kind of, I don't know, it'd be amusing. I think there's an option here to exclude any parts if you take that off. I think you can cut and that would be so good. Let's try it again. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. So really, now it's got this thing flying around. Like, I don't know if you can see above my head, there's like all these black dots. I don't know if that's picking up the recording or not. It's done that kind of on and off. I don't really know what's up with that. It wasn't doing that. I'm going to go with the other camera, but it's done that on and off. So that's another thing that I don't fully understand. I'll try changing the resolution and see if that helps. Negative. <laughs> Tom Cruise doesn't look like this. That's funny. I enjoy this kind of stuff. I hope you guys do too. Let me do. I don't know if this will pick up. Let me pause for a second here and we'll resume. So I quickly wanted to go over uh, how to actually produce like one of the models that can be used by DeepFace Live. You need what's called the DFM file. So I've got this. Uh, folder here. This is like when I was working on with Patrick Stewart to try to make a dirty airy video, which really hasn't been coming along that good. So ignore that for the moment. But basically there's a, a batch file in here that will say export 
S-A-E-H-D. So it like, depends on what kind of model you're working with. And if you guys don't know anything about this software, uh, it would take quite some time to explain what these different things do. But AMP is a type of model. S-A-E-H-D is a type of model. Uh, the, the stand, I don't really know what it stands for because like the documentation on this stuff isn't awesome. Uh, the guy who writes this application is from Russia, and so there's some uh, language barrier to some degree. Although he, his English is fine, but just saying that uh, you know, like some of the documentation he writes on his site or whatever, I, I haven't been able to find really good walkthroughs. Like the DeepFace Live software on his site is missing steps on how to how to do certain things, etc. Like I said. Whatever. Uh, so, anyways, we want to create a DFM file. So, if you already have trained a model, like in my case, so like I'll go over here and show you my different folders here. So, there's the destination folder contains the video that you're trying to import onto. The source folder contains all your aligned images of Patrick Stewart in this instance, and the model folder here contains all the the various Python files and so forth that are created through the training process. And you can see. Like some information about the model here. It's at iteration 1,069,413. This is a 640 resolution whole face model. Uh, you know, just different settings that mean different things. So, anyways, if you've already trained up an SAE HD model, you can export the DFM file. The DFM file, I think, just means deep face model or something along those lines. So, you go in and I think that's it. Export again. Export SAEHD as DFM. You double click on this, it'll bring up a little batch file and it'll tell you, like, you just hit enter and tell it you want to run. It doesn't take very long, it takes like 15 seconds. It'll spit out a DFM file, which it will put into the model folder. It'll be like, S, you know, the name of the model underscore SAEHD dot DFM. And you copy that and then I'll bring that up here in a second and show you where. We can, uh, where to put it? So one second. All right. So now I'm in the Deep Face Live folder structure here, and we want to go into user data, data, DFM models, and you can paste that DFM file that you created into that folder. And after that point, when you go, like I showed you guys earlier, when I was using the software and specifically selecting which model I wanted to import and run over my face, this is where those files are stored at. So you import, you know, you save your Export your DFM file from your SAEHD model. You copy that file over. You put it in the user data DFM models folder of your DeepFace Live directory. And then when the next time you load up DeepFace Live, you should be able to select the model that you've saved here and see if it works for you or not. So again, hopefully that was useful information. All right, so now you should be able to see if I was side by side of me on the left and Mr. Cruz on the right. And again, this is a pretty good job of keeping up with me in real time. I mean, as long as you don't get obstructions in front of your face. And see, because I'm bald and don't look like Tom Cruise, either you, you know, wear something on your head like a hat or a beanie or something, that'd get a little hot. But, you know, if you wanted to be convincing, and I don't know if it's up these effing dots on my head, so that's not helping. But theoretically, if you wanted to be confu convincing, I mean, not confusing, um, you know, having some kind of headgear on so you could kind of add to the suspension of disbelief. You could have a hat or you could have a wig or, you know, if you have hair, you could do something with it. Or, you know, deep fake yourself as a guy who's already bald. That's a good idea. Like, like Patrick Stewart or something. Hey, I've got one of those. The problem with my Patrick Stewart is these resolution 640 and would not work in this process at all. Also, like I say, this is, this is good for streaming, like with OBS, because you put yourself like down a little, little bit, itty bitty corner, and it's like people are only seeing this small, low res picture of you. But obviously, blown up, this doesn't really pass the smell test because it's the resolution just isn't there. And, like the teeth aren't that sharp, you know, they're, they're kind of blurry and eh, pretty good. Uh, you know, range of expressions. So I'm hoping that my Arnold Schwarzenegger will be uh, pretty viable. Let me try. Ah, uh, yeah, that's so good. Eh, that's so hot either. Like that starts to get a little bit mongrel, sort of messed up by it. So again, you pretty much have to be looking at the camera. And let me get a little closer here. Like, 
eh, you see there's like a little bit of a flick the other side but there's like a little bit of a flicker above the one side eh, yeah there's like some dots appearing over my eye on that side if you see i'm getting up like little white dots underneath the eye there's like some deformations so you get a little too close and it starts to have a problem so you know a good seat of distance and just play with it pretty good well uh i hope you guys enjoyed the content hope this was uh of value to somebody probably not too many people that are interested in this but i think it's kind of cool and i think this will be this is dangerous dangerous technology we're playing with your people because you know uh you know especially like in politics for example or whatever it might be celebrities you can make it look like somebody said something they never said and they were in a place they never were and be pretty convincing about it you know like i say i don't look like tom cruise but pick another actor um you know wear a hat do a couple things to kind of add to the disbelief and suddenly you pretty pretty convincingly could be that person uh, you could say make them say something pretty heinous so just Use it for entertainment purposes only. That said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys again real soon. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Maybe subscribe to the channel. And I'll be attempting to use this in live streams with gaming here in the near future when I get uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger finished up here. If I can't get that to work, uh, there's a Sylvester Stallone model. I think I might have that downloaded. Let me see if I have Stallone. Let me see if that works real quick. Nah, it's, it's downloading it. It probably won't take very long. We'll see what Stallone looks like real quick. Because I can, I can kind of do his voice. No, not really, but I can do like a bad storm. Oh, <laughs> that's not bad. That's actually better on me, I think, than, uh, well, you can kind of see around like the top of the head. There's like a flickering there a little bit. But that actually looks, in my opinion, maybe a little bit better on me than uh, Cruz did. Now, now, now I am, uh, now I gotta try freaking Margot Robbie. <laughs> All right, go on. Go on, Margot Robbie. But yeah, Stallone, that actually looks pretty good. If I can get uh, Arnold looking even adequate like these are, this would be pretty fun. So, <laughs> that looks ridiculous. Oh, the teeth don't look too bad, but like, uh, holy hell. How are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's jacked up. All right, guys. Talk to you guys again real soon. Later.